ever experienced any of these problems? Because I certainly have. And they all can be attributed to one thing, tonguing. Stick around to find out how you can go from sounding like what you just heard to sounding like this. Hi everyone, I'm Natalie and on this channel I believe that the bassoon should be accessible to everyone. So I'm here to help provide you with the skills to play anything you want. And if this is the first time we're meeting, then consider subscribing to the channel so you can keep up to date on any future videos that I make that might help you out. Just so that we're on the same page with how tonguing actually works on the bassoon, let's talk about where exactly on your tongue should be making contact with the reed. Take the tip of your reed and place it directly against the tip of your tongue. Now, move the reed slightly on top of your tongue so that the tip of the bottom blade of the reed is making contact slightly behind the tip of the tongue. As you can see, there's not very much surface area where the reed is making contact with the tongue, and that's very intentional. So we've talked about the placement of the tongue when it makes contact with the reed, but we haven't actually talked about the tongue motion when you're actually tonguing on the bassoon. A common mistake that beginners make is that they think that the tongue should be coming at the reed every single time that they want to articulate, but it's actually the opposite. Your tongue should start on the reed every time you want to play a note, and then it should come away in a downward motion and then return to the reed at the end of the note. The reason that you want the tongue to come away in a downward motion is because if your tongue comes straight back when you're tonguing, that creates an obstruction in your oral cavity that your air has to come around. So when you come down, when your tongue comes down each time, that allows the air to pass through quickly on each tongue. Tonguing is not just about the initial attack of the note, it's about the release as well. So when your tongue returns to the reed when you're finished playing, it should be a lot gentler than when you initially started. If you were to slap the reed closed each time that you were done playing a note, you would get a really abrasive stopped sound. Being able to control the release of each note is really helpful and important, especially when you're playing things like the famous bassoon excerpt from The Sorcerer's Apprentice, where you want each of the staccato notes to be really buoyant and bouncy and have a crisp end to each of the notes. One of the biggest mistakes that students make when they are trying to learn how to tongue appropriately is they forget about their air. Air is key. You can have the best tonguing technique in the world, but if you aren't putting enough air behind it or your air is inconsistent in some way, you won't sound good. Now, when I say air, I really mean air support. And air support means that you are using your abdominal muscles to control and to regulate the air stream that goes into the bassoon. You can't just blow all of the air in your lungs into the bassoon and hope that it sounds good because you'll constantly be running out of air and you won't have very much control. When it comes to articulation, your tongue should never fully be stopping the airstream. It should only ever be lightly interrupting the airstream. It's helpful to think about a garden hose. So when you're using a garden hose, the water is constantly coming out the garden hose and it's pressurized to to come out. But when you put your thumb over the end of the garden hose, it interrupts the water stream, but it doesn't stop it. That is how your air stream should be at all times. Even when you don't necessarily need your air to move through the instrument at a particular moment, it should be ready to go. And your tongue should just be kind of the gentle gate to allow the, the air stream to move through, just like with the garden hose analogy. One of the most helpful techniques that I find in my playing when I'm trying to improve my tonguing on the bassoon is something called breathe, place, play. And it's not something that I came up with. It's actually a technique that a lot of different wind players use. The basic idea here is that every time that you're about to start a note, the first thing you, you'll do is you'll breathe in 
and then you'll place your embouchure and your tongue on the reed so you're all ready to go and your air is pressurized just like with the garden hose analogy it's pressurized ready to go and then when you're ready to play to start the note all you have to do is release the tongue and everything your embouchure your your tongue your airstream is all set to go by the time you need to play so in action if you need to start playing on the downbeat of a song it would go something like this one two Breathe, place, play. I find it particularly helpful if I have to play a low note at a pianissimo dynamic and I have to come in with a perfect start to the note. And this breathe, place, play technique really helps me come in confidently knowing that the note is going to speak because I've got everything prepared and set to go. A super common issue that happens for all levels of bassoon players is when your fingers don't line up with your tongue. And it sounds like this. And I would be willing to bet money that it's not necessarily a tonguing issue so much as is it is a fingering issue. So how I would approach a passage like this where my fingers and my tongue aren't lining up in the right way is I would slur the passage, take out all tonguing, and focus on getting my fingers to have really smooth, even motion and make sure that I'm not doing anything weird with my fingering technique. When you can play a passage perfectly slurred, then you can start to put the tongue back in at a slower tempo and then gradually build up until your fingers and your tongue are matching at the goal tempo that you want to play. A question that I often get asked by students is, how do I tongue faster? And the short answer to this is lots and lots of practice. Assuming that your fundamental tonguing technique is in good working order, then you can start to practice specific exercises that work on the speed. My favorite single tonguing exercise is by a bassoonist named Frank Morelli, and he's a fantastic performer and teacher. I'll link down to this exercise in the video description so you can check it out yourself. What this exercise does is it helps you to isolate different parts of a 16th note passage so that you your tonguing can become more steady and even in different scenarios. My advice for you if you want to start incorporating this exercise into your practice is to start as slow as you need to go to make the whole thing super clean and even. And each time that you practice it, you'll bump up the metronome a couple clicks each time that you play and really making sure that you're listening to how clean and even your tongue is across the board. If you're able to incorporate this exercise into your regular daily practice, I guarantee that you'll notice a faster tongue in a matter of weeks. Now, the tips that I just gave you are all about making your single tongue faster. There is a technique called double tonguing and even triple tonguing where you can go even faster on the bassoon. Those techniques are kind of more involved and more advanced and they take a really long time to get good at. If you're interested in learning about double tonguing, let me know down in the comments and I might make a tutorial about it in the future. If this video was helpful for you, I would love it if you hit the like button and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. I would also love to know what other questions about tonguing or other topics on the bassoon that you have that I might be able to cover in a future video. I actually made this video because of a comment from another video that requested that I go over what the proper tonguing technique on the bassoon is. So I'm always looking for new ideas and I want to know what I can do to help you get better at the bassoon.